today we are accepting a challenge that I made for myself, making a zine in 24 hours. So first off, what exactly is a zine? A zine is pretty much a non-commercial handmade publication. Historically ways for marginalized groups to create their own publications for extremely cheap using very little materials because they were barred from more traditional means of publication. So the zine itself is pretty much like an inherent facet of grassroots movements, which is a really cool aspect of zine making. But all of that pretentiousness aside, they're also just really cool things that you can make for your friends I'm using literally anything you have, any materials you have, and especially now more than ever in quarantine, it's a cool way to keep in touch via snail mail. This first step, you have to think about what you want to put inside the zine. So you can make a zine a lot of different ways but the easiest way and the way that uses the least material is to to make it with one letter sheet so you'll see later on one letter sheet yields six pages plus a front and a back so the flat lays that you saw earlier have eight pages technically but two of them end up being covers so it's really six pages no am i explaining this well so there are a lot of things that you can put inside your zine Today's zine is gonna be a studio art zine with some collages. So the next step is to make what you've thought of. So for today's collage supplies, pretty much all I had in my house was just a shit ton of magazines, like a random bag of scraps that I got from studio before I left school, a pair of scissors, and a glue stick or some form of adhesive. So, um, if I'm just gonna watch a bunch of time lapses of me collaging. I don't really know if I have any good collage tips. Actually, no. Here, here are a couple of collage tips. One is I used to go into things looking for very specific images, which I found to be pretty unproductive. Rather, it's much easier to kind of just cut out anything that looks interesting even if you don't know what you want to do with it because if anything if you don't end up using it you can save it and it might come in handy in another collage that you do in the future so at the beginning just take time to cut out anything and everything and really just compile all of that also second tip save the scraps obviously if they're like tiny then you just like throw them away but I save almost everything even if I don't end up using it because it almost always comes in handy in a later art project. I'm not an artist, okay? I kind of just move things around on the page until I think that it looks good. So another thing, don't overwork it. If it's done, then just call it a day. Don't feel the need to go adding shit. A lot of the time, you end up like hating yourself for it later. And also you can add stuff digitally and it's much easier to move that way, so an hour later, this was the collage that I ended up with. I like the red tones a lot. I really like monochrome color palettes, so one color story with monochrome photos on top. I really like using text in collage. I think that using text in a kind of absurd or ironic way can be really effective. Not, not to be like, my collages are so effective, but I'm just saying, text can be used strategically in collage.
once I'm done with any project, the room is a disaster, the workplace is a disaster, and sometimes, I'm not, I'm not proud to admit it, I'll just leave it there for weeks, <laughs> because it, it's just a pain in the ass to clean up. So, you know what, do your, do your future self a favor, clean it up immediately. Next step. This stuff's pretty intuitive. Um, if you <laughs> did your work digitally, obviously this step doesn't apply to you, but because I wanted to put the zine together on the computer and print it out for consistency, um, I had to scan my work on to the computer. But also, I think this is a good time to say that your zines don't necessarily have to be made on the computer or printed. Like, if you don't have a printer or a computer, that's totally fine. You can just make it by hand. That's cool too. So ultimately, this is what my scan looked like after I cut the background off. So next, I just opened the image in Photoshop to do some basic color correcting and to cut the background of my photo out. That was all that I intended to do. Um, my scanner doesn't scan into PNG, so I just had to cut it out. Um, also, sorry if it was a like, weird screen record lag. I don't know why it happened on this clip exclusively, but I'm just gonna have to deal with that, sorry. So yeah, here I am in Photoshop cutting my image out and I was just playing with the exposure, contrast, and then I pulled up the hue um, slider and I realized that because my palette was so monochrome, I could pretty much maintain that monochrome palette but change the color that it was in Photoshop. So I was like playing with purple and like the invertedness of the colors and I ended up making it a diptych, one original and one inverted and I like the look of that. So next is putting it all together. So as I said, the zine is pretty much eight pages. So, so here I am in InDesign, making my letter, template, whatever. And then I'm just using the shape tool to make eight identical rectangles. Anyway, I knew that I wanted it to be kind of an full view on the left and then a close-up of details on the right. And so I kind of just played around with what details I wanted to show. I put a last collage it on the back because it is it's very horizontal. Because it is one image on the back, I didn't care that you would have to open up the whole thing to see it. Honestly, I kind of liked that about it. And I use InDesign for putting it together, but you can also pretty easily do this with a word processor. I just opened a letter page on pages. I just made the same eight rectangles. And um, yeah, you can just put your images in and resize them accordingly, and you can just get creative with the crop tool. I think it's pretty easy to do on word processor too if you don't have InDesign experience or you don't want to pay for Adobe because paying for Adobe is such a pain in the ass. And so finally, after putting the entire zine together, this is what I ended up with. So here's the eight pages and the back. One thing that I didn't film on screen record but is really important is that you have to flip one of the rows upside down for the zine to come out properly. So if you see here, this top row is flipped and um, that's important. I probably should have screen recorded that, but remember that. This is like a warning. I have wasted so much ink and so many sheets of paper because I've accidentally forgotten to flip a row and half your pages come out backwards. So please remember when you're making your scene, half your pages have to be upside down, whether you do it on the computer or by hand. So next step. Obviously, if you're doing it on a computer, you have to print. So here I am printing and finally this is what it came out like. So here's the flat lay. Um, my printer is pretty shitty and the ink was like, free it was like freaking out because there was so much color. But you know, that's also a sign of the times. FedEx is closed, don't have access to a laser printer. Maybe your zines will have shitty color, but that's in, that's in the spirit of zine making, okay? So next is 
arguably the most important part, foldings. For this, I use an X-Acto knife and a ruler, but you could also use scissors, a paper cutter, a box cutter, or any blade really. So first step is cutting the edges off if your printer will not print edge to edge. The next thing is you have to cut a center seam along the bottom edge of the center two panels. Then hold, fold your sheet of paper hamburger style, then crease the center fold. Then fold your hamburger folded paper in half widthwise. So then after you unfold that, there should be a long fold and then a central fold down the shorter length. Then fold each of those halves in half again. And then I do a horrible job of explaining this part, but I think that if you're like physically folding your zine, it's really intuitive. The final step, you kind of just fold the entire thing so that the front cover be like is in the front and the back cover is in the back. I know that that is the most nonsense instruction but i swear if you're folding it there's only one logical way to finish making the book so that the front covers the front and the back covers the back i promise yeah and here's a final flip through of what the zine looks like now that your zines are finished last thing to do is to deliver them so it's kind of corny i really like snail mail i like receiving mail i like sending mail I um, think it's cool to receive things in the mail, it's like very novel, and so just packaging a zine, you know, as one would, writing the address, cropped out of frame for obvious reasons, putting a stamp on it, and then there you have it, that's it. You've completed a zine under 24 hours, it's going in the mail, it's in the hands of the postman now. Hopefully this was educational, I don't think I- I hope you guys make your own zines, send them to your friends, I'm sure they'll really appreciate it. It's a cool project. I mean, what else do you have to do on the traction side? Thanks for watching. Until next time.